seriously? Hey, hey guys, and welcome to this painting showcase video with myself, Six Plus Stevo. In this one, I'll be showing you this, my newly painted Daca Dread. Some of you may remember this fella from the channel from quite a while ago. Um, I'll pop a link up in the top corner of the conversion video, which will talk you through all the bits I used and how I did this guy, because quite honestly, I can't remember where a lot of these bits came from now and how I did it. So you'll have to check that video if you wanna see how I built this guy. Uh, for this one, I'll just be showing you the paint job on him. Uh, so yeah, the idea of doing a Daca Dread is something that's always appealed to me. Um, with the new codex, it's not really new now, is it? It's been out for a bloody long time. Um, but yeah, in this current codex, we now have the option to swap out all the Dread Claws for ranged weapons. And as a bad moon, that just appeals to me. The idea of having a Death Dread just loaded with nothing but Daca, how could any bad moon refuse such an offer? Um, but yeah, here he is. He is armed with four big shooters. I plan to give him the custom job or the mech job or whatever they're called to give him the more DACA rule. So on a four plus he gets extra shots and on a six plus he'll get even more extra shots. Um, I also like the idea of running him with a um, uh, war boss on bike or the death killer war trike so I can access the speed war to gain even more DACA on the uh, speed war turn. But with all that said, let's take a look at this guy. So I've done it with my usual colour scheme, uh, black, yellow, rusted metal, you know the drill now. All my army is painted exactly the same. Um, I've done uh, a blue on the uh, lenses, um, which I always put a, uh, I always spray um, with a matte varnish over the whole miniatures. I always do that, I love the matte finish that gives. Uh, especially because I, I, I wash the models down. Um, when I've done the paint, I wash them down with a soft tone from Army Painter and it gives a very wet, glossy look to the whole thing. Um, and that's there until I've finished painting. Um, but then when I put, put that matte varnish on, it just dulls all that right down and gives it a lovely matte finish, which I absolutely adore. Um, and then I always do a little gloss varnish over lenses and things like that because it just gives them that nice shiny sort of glassy look and I love that little sort of uh, attention to detail that does. Um, but with the matte varnish, I had a bit of a disaster with this miniature actually. Um, I think the conditions in these winter months, rainy days where I was sort of hanging out of my front door doing the spray varnish on this guy, I had for the first time ever. It's not happened to me before, um, but it got a little bit of frosting on him. Um, so it sort of had a sort of a grey frosting, um, not round the front, but round the back of him it did it. And I was like, oh no, what have I done? I've ruined it. Um, but then I remembered I had not yet applied the rust. So I do all these rust effects by sort of sponging them on. And it's uh, one of the Army Painter effects paints called um, Rust Effects, I think. Um, so luckily, because I still had that stage to do, I could sponge the rust uh, strategically over the little points where it, the frosting had happened. Luckily, it was only very minor. It was in certain parts of the miniature. It hadn't done the whole thing. Thank Gork. Um, but yeah, I got away with it. This is something I love about Orcs. Orcs are so forgiving. Um, if you mess a little bit up on the paint job, especially on vehicles and things, you can go, right, well, I'll apply some battle damage over that bit to hide hide the, uh, you know, the rough paint job or where, you know, maybe the wash hasn't, you know, it's pulled up in an area. You're right, I'll put some battle damage over that. So yeah, Orcs, so forgiving with painting. If it had been a Space Marine vehicle or something, I probably would have been crying. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's uh, swivel this guy around and have a look. Um, as you can see, I've done the base, the same as I always do, desert base with some tufts and things. Um, but yeah, there's not, not a huge amount to, to go over further, really. He's just um, painted in the usual way. Um, and I can't wait to add him to the mob. This now means I've got four Death Dreads in the uh, army. I've got Snap, Crackle and Pop, obviously. I'll pop a link up so you can check them guys out as well, actually. Uh, and now this guy joins the fray. 
Um, I'm planning to use him in games very much as sort of like a mobile artillery piece. He's essentially going to sit at the back of the board and just dacker away all game, um, which I, I think will just be beautiful. Um, the only problem now is, because I've built another one, I've got one unit of three, and now I've got this guy on his own, I'm going to have to do two more, aren't I, and get some more dreads in the army. Um, I've got some ideas about what I want to do for my next two dreads, but uh, if you've got any ideas for me, um, leave them down in the comments section below. I would love to get your ideas of you know how you think I should equip my next two dreads, and what you think I should kit them out for, and uh, yeah share that in the comment section below in the meantime hit the like button hit the subscribe button ding the little bell so that youtube actually tells you when i've got a video out um, and until then guys i will see you on the next one this is six plus stevo signing out